This is AutoLine Daily, the show dedicated to enthusiasts of the global automotive industry. While this sounds like an April Fool's Day joke, but it ain't. Volkswagen of America is changing its name to Volkswagen of America. That's Volts with a T. It's all got to do with the transition to electric vehicles. All EV models will have a Volkswagen badge on the exterior, while gas-powered models will carry the traditional VW logo. Starting today, the new branding rolls out to its advertising, website, and social media channels, and soon all of its dealers in the U.S. will have new Volkswagen signage. But what do you think? Is Volkswagen a cheap marketing ploy or a very clever idea? Let us know in the comments. Well, you've got to hand it to Volvo. It sure knows how to treat its employees well. It's offering 24 weeks of paid parental leave to anyone who's worked for the company at least a year. It applies to either parent, and they can take their leave at any time within three years of becoming a parent, and they get 80% of their base pay. The policy includes adoptive parents, foster care, and surrogate parents, as well as non-birth parents and same-sex couples. Volvo already tested the policy in Europe and found that nearly half of the applicants were fathers. The global Autoline stock index fell 1% yesterday, though it varied by region. Automotive stocks were up 3% in Europe thanks to a 5% surge from Volkswagen, but they were flat in Japan, down 1% in China, and down 2% in the U.S. Investors are still worried about the chip shortage and the impact it could have on earnings. Want to buy a C8 Corvette? Well, good luck with that. Inventory is so tight that Chevrolet instructed its dealers to stop taking orders. It doesn't want customers getting angry, sitting around forever, and not getting their cars. There are only about 1,000 Corvettes in inventory around the U.S., which is practically nothing. And so guess what dealers are doing? They're tacking on an extra 10 to 30 grand to the cars they do have in inventory. And guess what? That's making customers a lot more angry than having to wait around for their car. We want to know what drives your testing. OTA, connected car, diagnostics, remote testing, Intrepid Control Systems is here to help you work from anywhere. Intrepid Control Systems, driven by your data. Here are some of the details we've been waiting around for on Kia's all-new EV6, which goes on sale in the second half of this year. Two battery sizes are available, 58 kilowatt hours and 77.4. The larger pack, when paired with two-wheel drive, returns up to 510 kilometers or about 315 miles of range based on the WLTP cycle. All-wheel drive is also available and is standard on the more performance-oriented GT model that does 0 to 100 kilometers an hour in 3.5 seconds. Kia says it's possible to charge from 10 to 80 percent in just 18 minutes thanks to the EV's 800-volt and 400-volt charging capabilities. Cold weather was a focus as well, and its latest generation heat pump allows the EV6 to retain 80 percent of the range it would have at optimum temperatures, even when temps dip down to negative 7 degrees Celsius or roughly 19 degrees Fahrenheit. There's more information about the EV6 in the press release, and we'll provide the link if you'd like to check that out. But we're pretty much waiting on prices at this point. Now let's shift gears over to Lexus, which just debuted this wild concept called the LFZ Electrified. While it's clearly a concept, Lexus says design elements will carry over into future electrified models, including battery electrics and hybrids the first of which is coming in 2025. We find it interesting that designers closed off the grille, but still maintain the spindle grille look. It's even more accentuated with large blacked out elements on either side that are meant to look like huge air vents. This also helps make the vehicle look wider, a feature that was picked up on the rear as well. 
It's difficult to see how parts of the interior will transfer over to future models, but it did say it went for an interior with a sense of openness. Guess we'll learn more as we get closer to 2025. SK Innovation is threatening to pull its battery business out of the U.S. if President Biden doesn't overturn a ruling the U.S. International Trade Commission made against it. Last month, the ITC sided with LG Chem, which accused SK of stealing trade secrets. The ITC banned SK from importing some lithium-ion batteries in the U.S. for 10 years, with some exceptions. LG and SK can still reach their own settlement, but the two sides aren't close to a deal. SK says it's looking at moving its battery business to Europe or China and may halt production of its $2.6 billion plant in Georgia if Biden doesn't overturn the ruling. SK currently supplies batteries to Ford and Volkswagen in the U.S. But SK isn't the only one putting pressure on Biden. The UAW, the Alliance for Automobile Innovation, and the Motor and Equipment Manufacturers Association sent a letter to the president urging him to support a comprehensive plan on electric vehicles and increase credits and incentives to spur EV sales. The letter also called for federal help for automakers and suppliers to build EV components and create a U.S.-based supply chain for materials and minerals needed to make batteries. If you like car design, then we've got a great Autoline After Hours for you coming up on Thursday afternoon. Our guests will be Carl Ludvigsen and Jim Hall, and we'll be looking at where car design has been and where it's going. That's Thursday at 3 p.m. Eastern Time on Autoline After Hours. Well, BMW has big EV goals. By 2023, it says it will have about 12 fully electric models on the road, and that sales of EVs will increase more than 50% per year between now and 2025. If that seems like a lot, it is, especially considering BMW doesn't have much in the way of an EV lineup right now. One way it's accelerating its EV efforts is by building ICE and electric vehicles off the same platform. This will allow BMW to ramp up faster and save money by not having lots of different platforms. But it's going to cause some pain in the long run. Production is slower because at some point the versions have to divert on the line to get a part or component the other one doesn't have. And an EV off an ICE platform isn't as good as one based off a dedicated platform. But with the increase in EV production, BMW has had to secure a second source for lithium for future battery cells. So it's investing 285 million euro in a company called Livent, which will supply lithium to BMW's battery manufacturers starting in 2022. ZF has a new level two ADAS system called CoAssist that offers adaptive cruise control with automated lane changes, traffic jam assist, traffic sign recognition, and automated garage parking. Obviously, this kind of technology is already available. But what caught our attention is that it's available on the Dongfeng Alios Yijuan, a compact sedan in China that sells for under $15,000. So how did ZF get the cost down for such a low-cost car? Christoph Marnat, the Executive Vice President of Electronics and ADAS at ZF, tells us how. Well, the key in that, sort, in that, um, in that area was to... Um, was to reuse technologies that we have available, right? That, that is on the shelf for us. So you know that uh, ZF sells uh, uh, ADAS cameras for a long, long time already. It's, it's a technology that we master very, very well. Uh, we also have some radars. We, we have a long experience with functions. And the idea was basically to reuse what we already know the best so that we can amortize the cost of the solution on a very, very wide scale. And not only for the hardware, but also for the software. And then 
The second item is to approach our customer and not to develop necessarily a solution a la carte, which I'm, I'm very happy to offer, by the way, if, uh, if you want one. But in that case was to approach Dongfang and say, hey, this is a prepackaged solution. Uh, this is what it does. This is the price that it costs. And we can integrate this in your vehicle as a turnkey solution. So there you go. There's the secret to low cost designs. Use off the shelf components and give the OEM a turnkey solution. In other words, sell them a complete package and don't let them pick and choose what they want because that drives up the price. While Christophe Marnat would not tell us the exact cost, he says it's well under $1,000. But that wraps up today's show. Thanks for watching. Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone, solutions for your journey. Intrepid Control Systems, over-the-air engineering, boost your game.